it's Rita here from Picked and Polished. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. I know that the weather has been just beautiful here in New Hampshire. Um, and I'm excited to share with you tonight another DIY decor project using, um, I had already cut some stencils with a Cricut. And um, you can also do this with any cutting machine that you have. So if you have a Silhouette Cameo or Cricut or whatever it is, um, you can do this project. Um, it's super fun and simple. It would make a great DIY workshop. And one of the things I do in my business is I'm the creator and, um, hi Kate, hi Ronnie, thanks for hopping on tonight. So I'm the creator of DIY Decor Makers Group, which is an online membership group for women who um, love to create decor for their home, to sell in their business, or to inspire others in DIY workshops. And so I'm always thinking about how projects that can be cost effective, that can make people more money or save people money when they're decorating their home, and would, would turn into really fun um, DIY sort of, um, sorry, I've got my shop door open so you can hear the cars going by. DIY um, inspiration for workshops if you're someone who likes to do that. So, hi Rhonda, thanks for being here tonight. So tonight we're gonna do something fun with this palette board. And one of the things we also do in our DIY decor makers group is we teach every, well, every about every month now, we drop in a build it bonus and we teach you how to build something small. And um, a couple months ago, we taught the ladies in there how to use a Craig jig and build palette boards. And we're gonna be doing more and more projects, um, small build it projects as time goes on. So those are one of the bonus things that we do in that group. So um, we're gonna be using this palette board. I actually just, I painted it in a bunch of different colors. Um, and you can pick these up also at Walmart for like, I don't know, $11 or something. But um, when I'm doing workshops or when I'm selling things, I make my own because the profit margin is so much higher that way. And I put so much time and energy into things. I need to get the most bang for my buck. So hi, Linda. Hi, Janessia. Is it Janessia? Am I saying that right? Um, thanks for hopping on tonight. It is an awesome group, isn't it, Kate? So tonight, this project is something you can use to decorate your home on a budget. You could also sell this, uh, make and sell, something like this, or you could also um, do a workshop with something like this as well. So I just took this palette board. It is, um, let me measure it for you. So, and, and I'll pull my screen down so I can show you what we're doing tonight. It's 16 by 12. Um, but you could do um, a bunch of different sizes or even small little block signs would be cute this way. You don't necessarily need a palette board. You can just make some stripes with paint and look like a palette board. Um, thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie says she loves the DIY Decor Makers group and we love having you guys in there. You're an, it's an awesome group of women. There's like 87 of you now. I and mean, we're opening the doors again on September 15th. And it'll only be open twice a year, so that's your chance to get in. Oh, Connie says it's the best thing I've done joining this group. Oh, that makes my heart so happy. Thank you, Connie. You're so sweet. You guys are lighting my heart up tonight. Thank you for that. Um, so we're going to be doing something with stencils. I cut um, these stencils that say welcome and then fall, but I'm doing something a little unusual tonight. I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a stencil resist as well. So I've got this guy here and you can probably see just barely. Okay, so. I'm just reading, is it, it's Janessa? Is that how you say it? Okay, I wanna make sure, or Janessa, Janessa. Janisa. Okay. I, I know it's important that I um, say people's names right because my name is Rita with an E and I got Retta a lot, a lot, a lot in my life. <laughs> so hi, Dina. Thanks for hopping on tonight. So I'm going to teach you how to take, you know, when I make my stencils and I cut them through my Cricut, I, I do some weeding, which is when you just pull that part out that you're going to be painting, right? And then you put your transfer tape on it. Well, when you do a stencil resist, you're actually going to do the opposite. You're gonna pull the vinyl off um, and you're gonna leave the vinyl on of the shape that you wanna leave behind. And we're gonna do that tonight. So we're gonna have the pumpkin that, that we're gonna kind of use to cover up 
these colors and we're gonna paint over the whole thing and then peel our pumpkin up and then what's gonna be left behind will be what's left um, the colors, the stripes um, from this palette board. So it'll be kind of a surprise what it looks like until we pull it up. And then after that, we can do our welcome fall, um, our welcome fall stencil over that. So I know, isn't that fun, Kate? Hi, Sally. Sally is a good friend of mine, you guys. She owns Create and Woodland Creations, and she makes the most beautiful, beautiful wooden flower bouquets you've ever seen. Sally, you should pop your link in the feed so people can, can go check out your work. She does bridal bouquets and um, you know, she takes old containers and put these beautiful wooden flowers in them. I mean, her, her work is absolutely stunning. So if you have a chance to go check out her page, do that. Hi, Jane. How are you? So, all right. So we're going to be doing the stencil resist with this and then doing some regular stenciling over it. So I'm going to go ahead and the reverse stencil. Yes, it's so fun. I'm going to go ahead and pull my camera down so you guys can see me working rather than you don't need to be seeing my face. Um, and I'll still be able to see the comments. But if I missed your question, hi, Kimberly. If I missed your questions, I will go back after the live and be sure to answer them. So don't be afraid to pop in your questions in the feed, okay? And if you're interested in getting on the wait list for the DIY Decor Makers group, you'll get the first exclusive invite before my doors um well, right when my doors open on September 15th, and I do have a, my wait list is growing, and I'm only going to let it get so big before I um, close it. So, opens on September 15th, so if you're interested in that, go take a look. The link is above when this video is over. What is the orange color? So, I did like a brown underneath, and then a white, I think the fluff, and then I did um, Florida orange dried sage and sea glass and then I went over it with a little bit of sandbar to kind of lighten it up and then I distressed it a little bit so there's a lot of layers going on here and these are all Dixie Belle paints which you can get on my website pickedandpolishedblog.com so hang tight guys I'm pulling you down here and I can still see your comments and it looks like you guys can see this okay right so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do with my pumpkin so instead of weeding like I normally would by pulling off these pieces, I'm going to actually pull off the opposite. So I'm going to pull off the extra vinyl that's kicking around my pumpkin. And so that is going to leave my pumpkin behind, okay? And then I'm going to throw this away. Then I'm still going to use my transfer tape, which is a paper tape. I have it in my Amazon shop. I've, the ladies in the DIY Decor Makers group love this combination of vinyl and um, transfer tape. That's the feedback, the paper tape that I've gotten over and over and over again from those ladies in the group. So, um, so I think I feel very, very confident sharing that combo with you. It's 631 transfer or 631 stencil vinyl and the paper tape and again those are in my amazon shop i can put the link in the feed when i'm done with the video you can also message me private message or send me a message on my business page and i'll help you with that too all right so this is transfer tape and the transfer tape is just going to transfer this sticker from the backing which is this part to the wood all right so we're going to go ahead and get that started and I'm just going to flip it over and smooth it down. And then my first job is to get my backing off without any of the, um, anything left on the backing. All right, so I did that. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of get it where I want it to go. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's about the middle. And measure and make sure it's centered. It's about halfway down. It's a little over two and a half. That's got to come over a little bit. And it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, I think it depends on, you know, if it's going to drive you crazy or not. If it's something that I'm selling, obviously, I want to get it as centered as possible. Um, and sometimes when you're using a Cricut or a cutting machine, it's all about the type of vinyl that you're using. 
it will make life a lot easier. So that's two and three quarters. Oh, two and three quarters, good. Okay, so we're centered. I'm gonna go ahead and rub that down and then I'm gonna pull this back. So if you have silhouettes of something you like, like I could have done a huge pumpkin and just left it at that and that would have been really cool too. I just kind of wanted you to see the difference um, when I combine using stencils with the stencil resist. So that's why I chose to do that tonight. Um, I wanted you to kind of get a sense of how you can kind of mix up those two things. So that's what that's gonna look like, okay. Um, and I could do it a couple different ways. I could take my drop cloth, or I have, what do I have here? I think it's drop cloth. Might be sandbar, have to look. Now this is a drop cloth by Dixie Bell. And I can go over it. And I'll show you what happens. I'm just gonna take a little bit, and I'm using a dry brush, okay? Because if I, if I have any moisture on my brush at all, it's gonna leak and bleed underneath this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my dry brush and just kind of brush over the pumpkin very carefully. And again, this would make a really fun workshop, something like this with the, where you do like a stencil resist. It's a lot of fun because people can play with colors a little bit more. Um, Just get this going here. Then I can decide if I wanna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna let a little bit of the base colors kind of show through there. Let's see. Put it to here. Like that. I don't think I'm gonna paint the whole entire board. I think I'm just gonna I could if I wanted to, but I'm just kind of dry brushing it over. I'm leaving some of that showing. And then I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do the welcome fall, like the fall down here and the welcome up here. Probably in like a dark gray, but we'll see what it looks like when I pull it up. Hi Kim, thanks for watching. All right, so I would just let this dry for now, but I think because I'm going live, I want you guys to see what this looks like, and then we'll see what we decide for colors for the font above and below. Um, I could also definitely just paint over this whole thing and do the whole, you know, do the whole thing in like a dry brush drop cloth, we'll see. So if you think anybody you know um, would love learning how to do this, please pass this video along. So here we go, look, it gives us the stripes. How cool is that? Love it. You can do this with patina. You can do this with like a bunch of different, um, you know, types of metallics and different paints and get a totally different look. It's a lot of fun. Just never know what's going to show up, like which colors exactly are going to show where. So there we go. And then I'm going to pull my stem up here. So there's my little pumpkin, right? That's a lot of fun. So now you guys need to help me decide. Do I paint the whole thing like dry brush and then do like a dark, I'm almost thinking like dry brush drop cloth over the ends and the top and then do um, gravel road for my lettering. What do you guys think? Isn't it so cute? Okay, so I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the dry brush. I might regret this, but I don't know. I'm just gonna lightly kind of, I want some of that paint to show underneath because I don't want it to be like super plain Jane um, white like drop cloth color I want it to look like I've got some of those colors still kind of peeking through see like that but my dark color will definitely pop over this so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lightly dry brush I'm gonna pull this down so you can see just kind of, and again, this is like, I think I used um, sea glass and sage green or dried sage, Florida orange. Um, and if I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, I could do um, some wax, some antiquing wax or, you know, something like that down here on this pumpkin. It's kind of fun. All right, let me just get that top corner. All right, get this down here. 
And then um, once this is totally dry, I can go ahead and do my stenciling. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, give this a quick blow dry if I have my blow dryer out here. Hold on just a second. Um, no. Oh yeah, here it is. Hold on a sec. I have this big crazy cord tucked away. So close your ears real quick. I'm going to give this a quick blow dry and then I'm going to show you what the stenciling looks like on it, okay? Thanks, Kate. Hi, Holly. All right, so this is just so much fun. Turn this on. Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. I think I have a I have a plug issue. Hold tight. Get this dried off, and then we can do the rest of the stenciling. tip for those of you that are doing this in workshops or you want to crank out a bunch of these to sell um, I or even if you're just doing it for home I would definitely want to just scuff up these palettes that you buy at Walmart because sometimes they can be really rough and it's a little bit harder to stencil on the rougher wood so just give it a good um, once over with a sanding block or with um, your your sanding you know your orbital sander or whatever it is you use so now I need your help you guys I can't decide what color Oh boy, what color to do the fonts in. Um, I'm wondering if I should do, I also have the bronze paint I could use, or I could do the gravel road, or I could do the orange. What do you think? Or I need your help. Can you guys help me on this one? I've got bronze, gravel road, or orange. Gravel road's like a dark gray. And that looks pretty with those colors. Or I've got the bronze paint, which is the patina paint, but you can use it as regular paint. It's like this color. Or um, what was my other one that I said? Or the Florida orange. And I could dull it a little bit. I could definitely like scuff it up. I've got a gravel road, an orange. Hey, Sylvia. Hi, Nancy. Wait, what did you say? Gravel road, another gravel road. Bronze, oh boy. Orange, it's close. I need a couple more votes to decide. Someone said copper, I like that. Yeah, copper would be cool too. Bronze, oh, I feel like it's tied. Gravel Road. Okay, I think Gravel Road's the winner. Oh, man. Bronze. You guys are killing me tonight. Look at that. All right, which ones are going to be? Bronze or Gravel Road? Wait, I keep grabbing the wrong one. Hold tight. Bronze or Gravel Road? Oh, gosh. You guys are making this so hard. I love it, though. Thank you. I appreciate your help so much. Oh. Oh, somebody else said bronze or gravel road. All right, we're going with bronze. Let's do something a little bit different. And if we don't like it, you guys can help me. If we don't like it, we can paint right over it, right? All right, so we're going to go with bronze. And if we hate it, we'll paint over it. That's the beauty of this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get my backing off of my stencil. Remember, I've already weeded my stencil. I've already taped it. So now my job is to just put some pressure and pull that off. And if I were doing this in a workshop, I would definitely have all this stuff prepped and ready to go for my people. Um, and I try to cut my stencils really straight so I can use the lines. Makes it a lot easier. It's just under two and a quarter. 
just under, under two and three quarters. Slide it over just a smidge. There we go. All right. Let me do the bottom one too. I feel like that one's gotta be at least an inch from the bottom. Maybe I should tighten it up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off. We'll do the top in the bronze and then we'll peel it a little bit and see if we like it. And if we don't, we can go back over it with the gravel road. All right. Same thing here. Just gonna make sure that it's even-ish. Two and a quarter, a little over two and a quarter. Two, so it's gonna go to this way a little bit. All right, that looks pretty straight. I'm just gonna turn it around so I can see it a little bit better. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull back my transfer tape and see how I'm putting pressure down with my fingers? And notice how that's popping up. It's no big deal, you're just gonna rub it back down and keep going, okay? Gonna keep cruising here. Whoops, little guy. And partially it's because I'm working on a slightly bumpy um, surface. Like it's not completely, you know, flat. Uh, it's a, got a little bit of texture to it. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful when I'm stenciling on this because of that. Okay, so now my tape is done. Let's go ahead and give the bronze a shot and see what happens. I'm gonna take a really super duper dry brush and go ahead and stencil this on. And I'm going to um, just kind of dab it on. Now the bronze is a little bit thinner and I highly recommend chalk paint with um, I'm gonna do like a dry brushed bronze. I'm not gonna get it like totally crazy solid. I'm gonna make it look a little bit distressed, I think. Um, and I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit and just see, yeah, I like that. If I like it at all or not. And I'm just gonna be careful right here because I just lifted that up. So I'm gonna move my just need a very, very little paint with a really dry brush. You guys know, those of you, especially in my DIY decor makers group, I'm always saying keep those brushes dry. Um, and even sometimes when you go to wash your brush, sometimes when you're done, um, you think your brush is dry, but the handle's wet, and then it'll get your brush dry, and then you get, um, you know, you get, you get more bleed through that way. I mean, it's, you can always touch it up, it's not a big deal. If that does happen, you're not gonna get in a panic, you'll just get a nice micro brush and just kind of clean up the edges and you'll be good to go. All right, I'm just gonna kind of feather that on. I'm just dabbing and feathering, really. Um, okay, I feel like if I'm gonna do the bronze, I need to do another coat. Let's see. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think because it's a little more transparent, or translucent, whatever the word is, I'm gonna go over it just a little bit more. But again, you're better off doing two light coats than one super heavy coat um, and then dealing with too much paint. But do you guys see, I have like barely any paint on there and it's covering beautifully. So if you use like a nice thick chalk-based paint, you're, you'll be all right. It'll bleed way less than a, um, a, a an acrylic sort of paint. All right. So Hillary said she went to a DIY workshop. She had her Mod Podge first. I'm not sure why. All right, that's a good question. So 
Um, so I don't do that. First of all, I don't really care for Mod Podge because of the smell. It just bothers me. And I don't know. I have used um, Satin Clear Coat or one of the clear coats by Dixie Belle and that works the same way. And basically what that does is it seals down your stencil a little bit more. Um, but I've done hundreds of, probably hundreds of people have done sign workshops with me, I would say. And um, we don't have a lot of trouble with bleeding. Um, and because I stress the importance of less is more with the paint, um, I just feel like the clear coat is like one extra step that I don't really need to do if people do it you know, if they just use less paint and do two super light coats, they'll be okay. Um, but yes, you can use clear coat if you're worried, especially if you've got um, a super bumpy barn board or something like that. Um, then sometimes it's smart to clear coat first. It'll help you seal it down a little bit. And it certainly won't hurt anything to do that. So you can definitely do that if you want. So as you can see, I'm just going back over one more time just to kind of get, and if I have any bleeding with this, I'm not gonna get in a panic. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna go back and touch up with my micro brushes. And that, you know, that can happen sometimes. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna just do that. Okay. So normally I would let this totally dry and then I would, you know, go back and peel it up. I'm just touching up the welcome a little bit, putting a little bit more bronze on there. Um, let's see if we like it, okay? Let's pull it back a little bit and see what we think. You guys can help me um, decide. And the nice thing too is um, Cricut design space I pulled this welcome like I didn't even it was in their um, library so I just went into my images and I typed in welcome um, and I found a really good swirly welcome already made and I used that and I inserted that into my design space and the same thing with the fall and so I didn't even have to do any text designing or anything it was like didn't take me but five minutes to design this all right so and if you have Cricut Access, which is their $9.99 um, subscription, then you're really all set. You don't have to pay for any very many things. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. Okay, and because this is bumpy wood, I expect a little tiny bit of bleeding, but I really don't have much. I've got like, I'll get you close. Like I've got like a tiny bit of like, I could go over that. I'll show you how I touch that up a little bit with a micro brush, but really there's not, it came out pretty clean. I mean, I do like the bronze. Do you guys like it? Kind of liking it. I'm going to lift up my, nor again, normally I would let these dry, but since we're doing it live, I don't want to waste your time and make you wait around. So we're going to go ahead and lift those up, but see how cute? Um, I actually really do like the bronze. And I am going to go, I'm going to show you how I touch up very, very lightly around edges, okay? Especially when you've got a lot of different colors going on, it can make touching up a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the welcome up, or the fall, I'm sorry. All right. Isn't that like so satisfying, you guys, to put, when you pull up the vinyl, it's like the best thing ever. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. Again, I would normally wait until this was a little bit drier to do this, especially if I were doing a workshop. See, I've got some um, bleed through right there, but I'm gonna fix that, it's no big deal. One of the most important things when you're doing touch-ups, I think, is to have the right brush and lighten your paint a little bit. You can you know, get it a little bit damp, your brush, and, um, and also, what's the other thing? Um, make sure your initial font is dry, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and dry my font. Um, I'm gonna dry these fonts and I'm gonna show you how to touch up a little bit, okay? All right, 
So what, the reason why you want to dry your fonts is because if I tried to go over this here with a little bit of the drop cloth, let's say, well, then the bronze is still wet. It's going to mix with the drop cloth and it's going to give me a weird, mushy, blended color that's not really going to um, do what I want it to do. So let me see what I have for a good brush here. Hold on, I've got a big old bucket. I've got a nice one here that I can use. And I definitely don't want one that's like all frayed and messy because that'll make it really hard for me to control where the paint goes. Um, and then I'm going to spritz my brush just a little bit with my mister. Uh, and again, I only dampen when I'm done stenciling, okay? So I've just got a tiny bit of, um, like a tiny bit of water on there and I'm just gonna get like a light amount of drop cloth on there because that's the color I went over everything in. So I don't want it to be super heavy because then it will look like um, a clump on my board. So I'm just gonna kind of touch gently, just sort of pat those areas and you won't even notice that there were any little like whoopsies. Um, honestly, it's like just a tiny bit of water because what that does is it, sometimes if you go try to touch something up and the paint is too thick, it leaves like a, a mark, like a thicker mark on the um, sign and then it draws your eye to that spot and you don't want to draw attention to the spots that you've touched up. You want the opposite to happen. So I'm just kind of dabbing with my finger and those are pretty much cleaned up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the welcome. I have like a little spot here. Again, I have like a tiny bit of water on my brush and I'm just kind of dabbing. And less is more, you guys. Don't, if you try to overdo sometimes with your touching up like right there, I just did that. Just taking a little water in. And again, I can always go over with a little more bronze if I want to. Just clean these areas up just a tiny bit. Um, and then before you know it, you've got a nice, nice clean lines. Got a tiny little, and I'm just kind of dotting my brush. These are very, very subtle. Like, I mean, somebody would have to really look at that to see anything. Um, so yes, okay. So let's pull up our, our screen. Hi guys. So Holly's asking me, hold on Holly, you're a little bit crooked here. I'm gonna fix it. So Holly's asking me if someone wanted you to make them some stencils, do you do that for a fee? Um, I don't have a computer, just my phone. So do you mean like, um, so yes, so I used to do custom stencils for people and now I do not because I have my online membership group and I'm um, doing some other things to help people with their businesses and like a coaching level. So I don't have time for that anymore. But if you want to offer that service to someone, if, is that what you're asking? Um, you can still cut stencils um, with your Cricut with your iPhone or your iPad. You don't need a computer. So there's our welcome fall sign. It's got a little bit of, so you look at, I do really like the bronze. I see a little spot there that I'm gonna wanna touch up like right here. Just gonna kind of lightly like brush over that and then kind of blend it in with the rest of the sign. There we go. And that'll dry and you won't even see it. So look at the fall, how pretty that came out. Um, <clears throat> and I see another little spot. But again, I can just like touch, barely touch it with my brush. I think when people get into trouble when they're trying to touch up is when they're like trying to um, touch up like too, with too much paint. And then it ends up getting messier than when you first start it. So there's our cute little paint resist welcome fall sign. Um, this would make a great decor for your home. You could sell this in your business or you could do a DIY workshop with a project like this. Um, and if you're interested in hopping into the DIY Decor Makers group, which opens on September 15th, it only opens twice a year, um, 
go ahead and check out the link above and we are welcoming new members and we are so excited about that. Um, and if you guys have questions that I missed along the way, please don't worry. I will go along and make sure I answer them um, in the replay time. So thanks again so much for being here, you guys. Um, I hope this was a fun project for you and I will see you again. I think I have another live scheduled for Friday. So um, I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.